All right. So in this video, we are going to discuss what is server side routing versus what is client side routing and the pros and cons of each one of them. Just a quick introduction from our last video. In the last video, we discussed what is react router and why do we need it? Just a quick recap. Basically react router helps us set the user navigation at client side from our react application. For example, madhavbehel.tech, madhavbehel.tech slash about, madhavbehel.tech slash portfolio and so on. All these are called routes. So react router helps us set the routes. Now this routing can happen, it can happen in two ways. First one is server side routing. The second one is client side routing. Both of them have their own advantages and disadvantages so let's quickly jump into each one of them so first one server side routing a quick overview let's discuss how how the things goes in server side routing so this is the old school methods of routing and this is how you must either know or if you don't know then uh, this this particular video will clear your concepts about how do uh, various routes take place and how do what happens when you go to a website and then you go to that website slash page one that website slash page two and so on so for example when someone tries to open madhavbehel.tech what happens is the browser makes a request to the server to serve the route the initial route now server internally checks is there a definition of that uh, is there a definition of that particular route that we are requesting for is that route defined does that route exist if that exists then it's going to do whatever things that are defined in the server and then it's going to send back the content that it's uh, defined to send now server is going to send back the request or uh, send back the response HTML, CSS and JavaScript content for this particular route and it's going to get shown on the screen. Now that's how a simple server client uh, architecture works. So this is a client, this is a server, client makes a request to the server and then server processes that request and returns back a response and then the client shows that particular response on the screen. As simple as that. No, no rocket science, no uh, jargons, very very simple. Client makes a request. The request goes to server, server processes that request and returns back a response and then the client shows that response on the screen. Now what happens when the user clicks on let's say about me button or any, any other route. Now the browser is going to uh, request to the server for madhavbehel.tech slash about. Now the request to the server goes to serve slash about route. Now again the same thing happens, server looks up its route definitions and then it tries to look up for is there a slash about route defined. If there is such a route defined then it processes, processes the request and then sends back the re uh, response for the slash about route and the browser gets the HTML, CSS and JavaScript for that particular route and then the browser shows it to the screen. A simple client server pattern. Now, uh, basically what happens here is a server side request is going to cause a whole page refresh whenever we go to a separate route. You must have seen madhavvehel.tech and then when we went to madhavvehel.tech slash about, the whole page got refreshed. The whole page got rendered once again. But in the client side routing, that might not be the case. We'll come to that. But yes, for now, server side routing is again the old school method of routing where the whole page refreshes again. Now it, it's going to refresh the, it's going to request the data that's needed for the current page. Not less, not more. Very, very simple. So basically, let's say if I'm visiting madhavbehel.tech slash portfolio, it's going to just request for that particular page. It's not going to make any extra request. It's not going to get any extra content. No less, no more. But a lot of people get confused here. They think that it's, it's not less if it's not more than probably that's the most efficient way. We are getting from the request what all things that we need to show on the screen. But no, that might not be always efficient. Why? Simple, because header and footer are generally the same. <coughs> There might be some more components, there might be some more redundant components. 
Now, if they have to be loaded again and again for every route, it's going to be super inefficient. Now, the benefit of this routing is deployment is mostly easy in this kind of routing because this server side routing has been a standard for a long time of web development. So yes, deployment is usually very, very simple in these kinds of scenarios. Now, but the catch here is that if it is not optimized, a full page render in a single go can be ex expensive. Of course, we would need things like lazy loading and all. But yes, if, this, if it's not optimized, it's going to be an expensive operation. Now let's have a quick look about client side routing. So with the explanation of server side routing, I bet that you already know by now what is client side routing. But still, let me explain it to you. Now what happens in the client side routing? Again, the user goes to motherwell.tech. The, it makes a request to the server to serve the slash route or the initial route. Server looks up for slash, it probably finds a definition for it and even if it doesn't, it serves the index.html file along with the required resources. Now it returns the HTML, CSS and JavaScript content and then it shows it on the screen. But what happens in the other routes? Now let's say if the user tries to open motherwell.tech slash portfolio or motherwell.tech slash about. What happens is the browser tries to serve uh, the make a request to the server to slash about route now the server is going to look for the slash about no it's not going to find any route that's defined with the name slash about it's going to check for any other dev resources for example let's say if there is some other html page or let's say if there's some other uh, png image jpeg image or anything with the same name no, it does not find any other dev resource as well. Now, what happens here is if it does not found any route definition, it's going to serve the index.html file once again. So basically, it's going to just serve the index.html along with the required resources. And then again, index.html is sent along with the client side JavaScript. And then the client side JavaScript has some sort of magical object, which actually resolves the route so basically as you guessed now the routes are resolved on the client side so in react router we have a history object at the client side javascript which tries to resolve all these routes and then tries to make a perfect content for each route now this was the case when we directly go to the uh, browser and enter the url which is mathofhell.tech slash portfolio slash about slash anything else now this actually makes a request to the server but what happens internally for example let's say if mathofhell.tech slash uh, this mathofhell.tech was an uh, uh, let's say it was a website and inside it i clicked a button so inside it, if I click a button, then it's not going to make a request to the server. Internally, it's going to, the history object is going to change the URL and then ha manage everything else. It's not going to ask for the resources again. So now again, that might be an efficient solution to what problem we were discussing, discussing in the last type of router. So the history object keeps a track of the address in the browser and the router defines the route. So router takes help of the history object. It takes help of the history object to keep track of the various addresses, various history and the current location of the uh, URL on, uh, of the page. And based on that location, it's going to serve the appropriate content. That's what happens in the client side routing. I am 100% sure that after this day, after today, after watching this video, you will no longer require any other explanation because this was as simple as that. I bet now you can explain any of your friend that yes, this was the history object. This is the react router and this is client side routing and this was the server side routing. So now before ending this video, let's quickly jump on to some important points for the client side routing as well. So as I already told you, the routing is internally handled by client side JavaScript. Routing between views looks much more smooth because there is no full page reload. You can, you can already imagine the experience, right? If you can't imagine the experience, let me show you. 
So let's say this madhavbehel.tech slash portfolio. This is the website that we are going to create in this particular tutorial. In this particular website, there is not a server side uh, routing. We have implemented the client side routing. For example, let's say if I click on this, it's not going to reload the whole page. As you see, the transition was <coughs> super quick. As you can see, it did not. So this nav bar did not change. It was, it remained as it is. So you see here, right? So that's the beauty of client side routing routing between views or pages looks very very smooth because there is no full page reload now again the efficiency redundant components don't be don't need to be loaded again and again for example header for example in this case this if let's say i click on my home page this whole component remained as it is it did not reload so that's the beauty of this thing but then again this again does not mean it is efficient since most of the client side JavaScript is loaded in the first request. So the initial loading time can be obviously relatively higher. So yes, again, uh, it requires more setup on the client side because server side routing has been quite, uh, has been there for quite some time. It has been the standard till now. So it's again, comparatively a little bit easier and easier to deploy as well. But even with the client side routing, trust me, it's not difficult to deploy. It's very, very simple. It's, it's the same thing for, uh, more or less. But then again, you know that what we use depends on our own use case. If your project says that I want more smooth transition between pages, of course, go for client side routing and so on. So yes, your decision should be based on your particular project requirements. Now, one disadvantage of this client side routing is that it can affect search engine results. It can seriously affect search engine results, but it's not that big of a problem now because it's been there so react and all these libraries have been there for quite some time now it's been years since they have they are being used so now there are a lot of methods for search engine optimization for these client side routing as well so that's not a big disadvantage but you might have to do some extra work for that i hope that clears your doubt so now in the next video let's start coding out our multi-page portfolio website see you in the next video super quickly bye bye